Welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast presented by Catch Cover, your home for ice fishing news, tips, stories, and strategies. And now, your host, Chris Larson. Welcome to the Fish House Nation podcast. Today we are talking tip-ups with Randon Olson, a fishing guide from the Otter Tail area of Minnesota. He, he guides during the summertime and during the winter. Randon, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on. This is going to be fun. So, Randon, we wanted to have you on today to talk about tip-ups. And first of all, let's start with why should you use tip-ups? Why is it important to know how to use them and to use them while you're fishing? Tip-ups are a great tool. You know, the biggest reason I use tip-ups is to cover water. And and more often than not these days, tip-ups are underutilized the way they really should be. Um, Too many people set them and forget them and pick them up at the end of the night with no bait left, you know. So we'll get into how to use them a little later, but I want to talk to you first about what types of tip-ups do you prefer? What are you using when you're out on the the water with your tip-ups? There is a bunch of different styles out there. Um, They all kind of have their own place but i'm a big fan of the original style of tip up and then the new not so new i guess but the uh the insulated round tip ups um those two styles are probably pretty much all i use how do you rig those tip ups up when you're getting ready for the ice season what are you doing with those tip ups what kind of things are you putting on them you know line is a big thing that i see a lot of guys they'll they'll rig a tip up up when they get it with some dacron or uh or braid whatever they prefer um, I'm a I'm a Dacron guy, but uh, they'll rig them up and then they'll be that line will be on there for five years. You know that's something that kind of gets bypassed. So new line is a necessity each year. Doesn't cost a whole lot. They don't fit a whole lot on the spools. Leaders are a big deal, and I like to run anywhere from an eight to ten foot fluorocarbon leader. Uh, pound test will vary depending on what you're you're using it for, but that that fluorocarbon is really abrasive resistant. Doesn't get scun up with the edges of the ice hole. Um, Fish don't bite through it real easy, and you got the invisible part there too. So, um, but but fluorocarbon and dacron seems to be a pretty good match for me. So, if you're going to set up your tip up for northern, what kind of poundage line are we putting on that tip up? I'm going to run about 30 pound dacron, and that's kind of standard for me on all my tip ups. And then when it comes to the fluorocarbon, I will run for northern pike. I, I like that 15 to 20 pound fluoro, and then I'll usually have some kind of a tieable leader or something going down to my hook, just so there's a few inches above that minnow that's a little less bite proof. What are you using for walleye? Walleye will go straight off of that fluorocarbon, and I like to run eight to ten pound test. The invisibility of that fluorocarbon, you can get away with a little higher test, and it seems to work pretty well. How much line are you putting on your tip ups? Uh, I'm getting about a 30 yard spool, and I'm filling that puppy up with the dacron, and then I'll run that leader on the end of that. So. I want those spools full. If you're not paying attention to them, it doesn't take a fish long to pull 30 yards out. So keep them full with that dacron and then put your leader on after that. So what size of hooks are you using for your spe- the different species that you're pursuing? So on tip-ups, it's a little different than if you're using something you're going to put on a rod or a bobber that you're kind of mand- um, watching and, and playing with a lot. Tip-ups a lot of times get left alone, so I like to downsize all my hooks on tip-ups. Those fish can stare at that bait as long as they want before they decide to eat. So it's a good idea just to downsize all your hooks and uh, keep things more, as natural as possible. So once you're out on the water, how are you setting them up? How are you deciding where to put your tip-ups? Tip-ups should be treated just like a jigging rod, so to speak. Um, you want to be any areas that you're looking to cover some water on. Before you really start going, go out there and, and drill a, a good number of holes, 10, 15, 20 holes. And don't don't be afraid to move that tip up every 15, 20 minutes. You know, kind of work an area, and you'll start to see where you're starting to get bites. And uh, the nice thing is with tip-ups, if you've got a couple guys, that's a few extra lines, you can spread those tip-ups out, and and you can really pinpoint what those fish are doing on that structure pretty quickly by just moving tip-ups around and seeing where where the fish want to go. If you're out chasing northern pike, Randon, What kind of structure are you looking for? You know, what kind of depths are you fishing? Weeds are a big deal with northerns. Um, And one overlooked thing with northerns is sand flats. So if you can find a big feeding shelf that's got a weed bed closer to the brake line and a big sand flat up shallow, 
uh, those sand flats are cruising areas for those pike all day long. You talk to any of the guys that do a lot of spearing and stuff, you know, they're seeing a, a multitude of fish, even big walleyes up in four to six feet of water in the winter. And that's all those fish do is they just cruise that sand and then they got the weed bed right next to there that's usually holding the bait fish and minnows and, and prey species. How much line do you let out? How deep are you typically fishing? Northerns, I set the tip ups pretty high. So say you're fishing 10 to 12 feet of water and the weeds top out at about eight foot down. Um, I'll set that tip up about four feet under the ice. I leave that pretty high up there. Um, walleyes, on the other hand, I'll, a lot of times what I'll end up doing with walleyes is almost laying the bait right on the bottom. Um, and the nice thing with that is that when that minnow struggles, he's kicking up sand, he's causing disturbances, and it's, it's kind of an attractant to get those fish over to see what's going on. So when you're going to set these up, how far are you spacing your tip-ups out? How, how much space are you actually covering when you're fishing? I'll, I'll start off with a bigger area. So I'll start off with about 30 or 40 yards between tip-ups, get them out, kind of start big, and then you can narrow down after that. Are you utilizing your electronics when you're deciding where to put these and you're drilling your holes in? How are you using those? Yeah, a, a really good way to kind of help you see what's under the water is uh, with all the mapping and stuff that we have now, is if you're, whether you've got a four-wheeler or a snowmobile or even if you're just walking, put that electronics right on, you, on your hand and walk that structure and kind of mark it out with whatever you're, you know, if you're walking or driving, whatever, um, kind of drive around that outside edge, drive around any high spot so you can visually kind of see what's going on. And when you come back to set tip-ups, you can start, you know, a couple tip-ups on the brake line or one up top, one deep, one in the weeds, one on the transition line. Um, and that'll help you narrow down what's going on. What are your favorite baits to use with your tip-ups? I love plain hooks and spoons. Those are kind of two polar opposites. One's a big flashy presentation and one's bare bones most natural um, those two get, seem to do very well for me does that differ with species of when you're thinking northern when you're thinking walleye um, what are you doing different there kind of the similar across the board with that with it with uh with walleyes I'll, I'll just do a single hook on the natural side uh, northerns i would do a, a treble hook and then on the spoon side, one thing about spoons under tip-ups is you want to keep them really light. Um, daredevils actually work really well as a spoon. Replace that big bottom treble with a smaller one. And it doesn't take that minnow much to move that spoon around and make a lot of flash. But I'll usually use about the same stuff for, for pike and walleyes. Um, might change the colors a little bit. Other than that, it's pretty similar. Is there a favorite minnow? What are you using? I'm a big, uh, big shiner and sucker minnow guy. Um, those work really well. One trick that has worked in the past for me is, is downsizing, but using two minnows. So use smaller fat heads, and if you put them on your hook facing opposite directions, they'll actually keep each other moving a lot longer, and then it gives a little better profile and looks, looks a little bit uh, wounded. One of the things you were talking about earlier is guys pulling out for the day, and they've left those tip-ups soaking all day long. How often do you check on your tip-ups? at least every 10 minutes. Um, you'd be amazed how many times there's fish cruising by and he'd been looking at that tip up for a while. And just you going over there, pulling that bait up, making sure it's on there and dropping it back down. I can't tell you how many times that flags went up before I've gotten five steps away. Yeah, at least 10 minutes. Let's talk about something that I think a lot of people want to know about and they're always afraid that they're doing wrong. How do you set the hook with your tip ups? That can be a, a different deal. Um, you, you need to give it a good firm pull. Uh, one thing I see a lot of guys do is they try to wait and feel that fish. And uh, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. I think any extra pressure you put on them before you set the hook can be drop your chances of, of getting them. Um, so I'm a fan of, of getting to the tip up, pull it up, make sure it's spinning when you approach it. As long as that thing's spinning, pull it up, grab the line and give it a good firm tug. You know, it's not the Bassmaster Classic. But it is a, you have to give it a good tug to get that hook set. And then just keep them coming. What happens if, if you pull up that flag and it's just kind of, there's not a lot of line getting spooled out. It looks pretty pretty dead. What do you do then? If it hasn't moved, you gave it a couple seconds and it's not really doing a whole lot, then you can go ahead, pull that tip up out nice and slow and just kind of play with that line almost like you were live bait rigging. See if that fish will take it. And if, if he does, 
go ahead and pull, set the hook. If not, you know, pull your bait up, check bait out, make sure it's still alive and kicking, and then get it back down there. A lot of times they will come back after they drop one. So let's say we've got the, the hook set. He's on there. How do, what's the best way to fight fish on a tip-up? Let them run. Um, you got to – you, you don't have a drag to protect you like you do on reels. You got to you gotta kind of use your best judgment. You know, if he starts to make a big run, let him peel that line out. One thing to be mindful of with tip-ups is you don't have a spool that your line's kept on, so you're putting it on the ice. So you need to set it in a manner that's going to allow it to, to pull back through your hands if you need to. Wind and all this other stuff comes into play with that. So something to be mindful of when you're reeling those, pulling those fish up. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people say, pull that line and, and let it sit kind of downwind from the hole. Is that how you do it? Yep. Let it sit downwind. It'll always come back up through your hand when that guy runs off. So, What's your best advice for people who seem to consistently lose fish while they're trying to pull their tip-ups up? Give them an, an extra couple seconds. So if you think he's ready, give it another 10, 15 seconds and then give it. Too many times, you know, I see a lot of musky fishing where they'll grab that big sucker minnow or shine or whatever you're using but they'll run for a little ways and then they stop and what happens when they stop is they'll spit that bait out turn it around and eat it head first so if you're consistently missing fish try waiting a little bit and just watch that tip up and if he stops give him wait till he goes again then take him so how do you use your tip ups in conjunction with your jigging setup do you go out and generally just fish tip ups are you jigging around it if you got one guy it's a good idea to throw one tip up out and then jig out of a hole. You can kind of pull fish in with the jigging and then your tip ups there for some good offering. Um, if you got five or six guys, you can have one or two guys jigging and then fill the rest of the lines up with tip ups. Generally, I like to put the tip ups on the outskirts of where I'm jigging. So either shallow or deep. And then I'll fish the in between with my, with my jigging rod and kind of moving around a lot. So um, I like to cover the areas that I, that I feel are less kind of think of the right wording here less productive during that time of day that i'm fishing when you're all done one of the other things that i often see is a bucket of tip-ups all tangled up how do you prevent tangles during transport how do you keep all your tips up tip-ups nice and neat that's a good question <laughs> um it, it happens and, and even if you individually bag everyone you're going to end up with some tangles sometimes in that but uh, one of the best things i do that's quick and easy is uh, just have, carrying a rubber band with you. Um, good heavy-duty rubber band when you get done. Spool that tip up up and wrap that rubber band right around the middle of the spool. The hook will stay underneath there. Everything will stay nice and neat and won't unfold in the bucket. Uh, that's worked pretty well for me. Right, and I know a lot of people are excited about getting out on the ice. Um, there's already people out, especially in your neck of the woods. Uh, is there anything about tip-ups that I didn't ask you that you wanted to touch on? Uh, one thing with those... In the uh, insulated tip-ups, um, they're very nice keeping your holes open, but one trick you can do is they all have a little tackle tray on the top. Don't bother putting tackle in there, but throw a hand warmer inside that, that tackle tray. Um, in those really cold days, that'll help keep that hole open a little longer. So a cool trick from Randon Olson. Randon owns and operates Lockjaw Guide Service. Randon, if someone's interested in doing a trip with you, how is the best way for them to get hold of you? Well, you can uh, check out my website, um, www.lockjawfishing.com. Um, you can send me a message on Facebook, but the absolute best way would just be give me a call at 218-640-0158. Brandon Olson from Lockjaw Guide Service, thanks so much for your insight on fishing with tip-ups, and uh, good luck to you out there during the ice season this year. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for listening to the Fish House Nation podcast presented by Catch Cover. For more ice fishing content, visit our blog at catchcover.com.